song, I forgot to start the uh, video. I know a number of people watch the, uh, the, the service online and appreciate welcoming them and glad to have that opportunity. Um, I am looking for someone, I think I've mentioned this before, if you want to bring your iPad and be like the greeter online during the service, that would be great. Uh, just to let people know that we're connecting with them in that way. It's hard to kind of do all those things at once like I just did this morning. Forgot to start the video. But uh, we we'll used some help with that. We've been trying to do a child-friendly song or a song to go back in our memories uh, to teach our children to make sure they don't miss the opportunities we had and, and the good songs we learned when we were younger. So here's a, a song. I've got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. How many people remember singing this song? Okay. okay. Now, you see in parentheses, it says the word where. That's kind of the, like, well, where is the joy? You're kind of talking back and forth. But you'll hear as it goes, usually that's, you know, the echo that people say that. And so there's a different person we'll go through. And at one point where we're clapping, I encourage you to clap as well. Let's sing this together. I've got the joy, 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 joy. see the smile on your face as you are glad to see one another in worship today. Let's continue our worship of the Lord.
be seated. Those children out here, they'd like to come up for children's life. Come on up. It is great to see all these young people today. Amen? Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. Come on up, guys. Come on up. Come on. I got lots of our names. Lucas and Richie and Ariel and Izzy, right? Come on up, guys. Come on. Very sad. 
And we're grateful, God, we can come to you anywhere, anytime. Bless these children. May they learn early in their lives, God, that you are always there for them. And you will hear them. Be with them now, God, as they go to the sun catchers. Bless them and help them learn more about you as we all seek to learn more about you. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. 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 Okay, head on up to sun catchers. It's great to see you all day. So we want to take a few minutes today to share words of praise, words of thanks, things that God is doing in our lives. Anyone have a word of praise you'd like to share today? Anything good? Yes. Anything? Come on, I'm a teacher, an English teacher, but I counted 19 or 20 kids out there today. Amen. And I'm very praise of that. That's incredible. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. Amen. And, and I, I would say they come because we provide something. We're providing something for families and Sunday school for the children. And so glad for that. Amen. Amen. Yes, Donnie. Brody has a birthday tomorrow. Brody has a birthday tomorrow. All right. The boy's getting older in the church, boy. I'll tell you what. God bless him. God bless him. Any other praises today? A number of things we need to pray for. Uh, I mentioned my mom. Uh, again, She uh, they, they said she did have a stroke. It, it's it's educational when you go to the hospital, isn't it? Especially yeah. these days. Um and, and I can't tell you how many doctors came into the room to see her. I tried to write things down. I lost track of, of keeping track of all the people that came in and attending physicians and interns. And, uh, and, and then nobody wanted to commit to a decision. Like, did she have a stroke? Didn't she have a stroke? Uh, but that was finally the, 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 the decision that they said that she did. Uh, like I said, she lost some mobility in our left side. Still not able to move her left leg but is getting some sense back and able to lift up her arm a little bit. So uh, I, I think she is on the road to recovery, trying to find, uh, trying to be there when the social worker shows up uh, to try to find a rehab place maybe down here closer to me. So hopefully uh, it's a weekend, so hopefully Monday that'll, that'll be happening. But uh, I know she's got uh, a number of friends that are there now with her. They were planning on going by to see her at 10.30, somebody else at one, and then I'll get up there after that. Uh, later today, but I do appreciate your prayers for, uh, as she says, Teresa with an H is my mother's name. She likes to make sure people know that. And how many times people came in? Do you know who you are? Do you know where you are? Do you know what day it is? All those different questions that they ask 50 million times, but uh, she's doing well, and I do appreciate your continued prayers uh, for her. Um, I do ask we keep continue to pray for Lou Bailey, uh, for his health, and for Marion as she cares for him. Um, also ask that we keep in prayer um, Ukraine and all that's happening there. And, and again, we always think wisdom to know and understand the things that we see, which uh, it was strange the other day. I, I, I found a site that had fake videos on it, that they can make fake videos up to date. So it's hard to know what's true and what's not true. So we really need God's discernment, God's perspective in these things. Um, and then the Bosser family, we ask to keep them in prayer. Uh, Vaughn's dad, Jack, passed away. And we want to keep uh, the Bosser family in prayer as well. Are there other concerns today that we want to keep in prayer? Yes, Becca. I'm having a uh, nerve ablation in my back on Thursday. So just keep that in prayer. All right, Becky, we'll keep you in prayer for that. All right. Yes. Pastor Melissa to what? Pastor Melissa? Yes, let's keep Pastor Melissa and her family in prayer. Thank you. Yes? Continue with Debbie. She had another little fall. This Thank you. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, Deb, Deb Burgess, keep her in prayer. I talked to her this week just to check in and see how she is. She goes, oh, I guess you heard I, I fell and, and, and have two staples in my head. I'm like, Deb. <laughs> so please keep her in prayer. Uh, again, wanting to do things on her own, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, let's keep her in prayer for patience. I'm sure that's what she needs right now. Again, she fell and broke her leg, her ankle, and, and going into the bathroom, she fell again, and that happened. So let's keep dead Burgess. Thank you. Remind me, you. Any other concerns? Yes, Barb. Um, John lost an uncle, and his grandfather's not feeling very well in the hospital also. All right. Keep John's family in prayer as well. 
Get that. Um, I have a friend, Dale DeVries. Um, she just found out she's going to have to go to the hospital because she's got a staghorn kidney stone, okay. which is about as big as her kidney wow. at this point. And she is scared to death right. of doctors and hospitals. So yep. just strength and a sense of peace. Okay. The right person you said it's Dale, her name's Dale? Dale. Dale, okay, I want to keep Dale in prayer. Going to a hospital for a, a very large kidney stone and patience and strength in the midst of that. Yes, Ben. When, when Ukraine was first invaded and you watched the people on TV heading towards the ATMs, they were saying, and heading mm -hmm. out of the, and I thought, boy, isn't this what the second coming is going to look mm -hmm. like? The rapture, <clears throat> the rest day. And we have the power to have the voice to make sure that we, those crowds are going with us. Amen. We are use that voice. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that word, Betty. Amen. Amen. Betty, Barbara? Um, Loretta's daughter, Dana, it is ill with COVID, but that's also a problem because she, she just had that kidney transplant. Okay. While we were having dinner last night, Dottie has blacked out. We were blessed because there was a nurse there and an EMT who immediately assisted. She was taken to the hospital in an ambulance, but everything checked out fine. So we were blessed. All right, all right. I know she'd appreciate the prayers. Is right. she back home now? Is that yes. Okay. She came right. home last night. Thank you for that update. Okay, thank you. I didn't hear that. Okay, let's keep uh, Dottie in prayer as well. My wife is maybe here too. Is feeling under the weather this week. She's she may have a kidney stone. They don't know. It's one of the things they're trying to figure out. And uh, favorite years had a kidney stone. I've had two before. They are not uh, enjoyable in any way. So uh, I appreciate you keeping Paula in prayer for some pain she's got as well. A lot of concerns this morning. We're glad again that we have a God that we can go to that hears us when we pray. Um, and so we're going to do our course. Jesus strongly close. If you'd like to come forward and kneel at the altar and lift any requests up to God, you're free to do that as well as we go to prayer. Let's sing this together twice. Jesus, strong and close. our minds, our spirits. Grateful God that we can know that you hear us when we pray. That you're listening. That you care. And we recognize ourselves, God, in this day that we live in a crazy, messed up world. We live in a place, God, where there is pain, where there is death, where there is agony and loss, where there's frustration, where there's disappointment. And even God, in the midst of all of those difficult things, we also recognize that we live in a time and a place 
where there is also joy and strength and peace that passes understanding and times of celebration. Lord God, we ask you to be with us wherever we might be this day. Whether we're in a place where we feel up or God, if we feel very low and feel down. May we draw peace and comfort and strength from your Holy Spirit. We pray, God, today for these that have been mentioned, for people that have lost loved ones, for Vaughn and his family, God, be with them. For Melissa and her family, Lord, and the, the churches, be with them as well. Continue, God, to watch over all of us, God, in these difficult times. We pray for people that are having operations or testings or recovery from strokes as my mom is or other people that are in rehab, God. We thank you, God, for the skills that you give to doctors and the caregivers and nurses, for interns that are learning. We recognize, God, that we don't know everything and we expect answers and we, we expect them immediately, God, and we know that the doctors are practicing medicine. And we've learned so much. And we know so much. And yet, God, we still know so little. We're grateful, God, that we can come to you. Lay our petitions. Cast our cares before you. And know that you care about us. And that you know what's best. And you'll help us in and through whatever is before us. We pray, God, today for the people in Ukraine hard to imagine what they're going through. Choices, decisions they had to make in the last week of whether to stay and hide, stay and fight, or go out of the country and where to go, to leave behind things, what to leave, what to take. We can't imagine, God, what that must be like. May you be with those people. You may be with the families. May you be with the children. And we pray, God, today for our leaders, leaders of our world. We pray, God, that there may be a acknowledgement, the value, the beauty, the sanctity of life. Lord, as we gather in this place, may your Holy Spirit continue to minister to our hearts as we learn and grow as we worship. As we recognize, even as we've been looking at the book of Revelation this, this year, that we may not know the day nor the hour, but we are getting closer each day. And we pray, God, that our hearts, our minds, our spirits would be ready and prepared for whatever lies ahead, knowing, God, that you are with us. You never leave us. You never forsake us. So be with us in the rest of this hour, God. Continue to bless our children as they learn. And bless us as we hear what you want to say to us today. Now, Lord God, draw us together as we pray together the prayer that you taught your followers to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the same day. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not our temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let's do another song. And, and you know, it, it is interesting to me, as I, 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 I try to get the Beth, the music, and the themes as we go through the year. You know, I, I worked on all this about three months ago, and it's amazing to me how everything seems appropriate. Let's stand together and say the first and third verse of Through It All. <laughs>
They're on the table in the back. I can run more off. Take one for yourself. Give them to some, some other people. Basically in here, asking us as a church to do the same kind of focused prayer through these 50 days. That we pray the same thing. We unite our hearts, our souls, and minds in prayer for one another. Each day you'll be asked to read a psalm. We're reading from Psalm 1 through Psalm 50. The psalm itself is a prayer. And I want you to be in an attitude of prayer and to see what God may re be revealing to you. And then I made some suggested guidelines and outings some things to pray for. Sometimes it's for yourself, for your family, for your witness, for our nation, our community, others in our church. I took the directory that we have and I kind of divided up the names up for three or four families each day to pray for it. If I left you off, I'm, I apologize. If I spelled a name wrong, I'm sorry. Try to do our best to, to include everybody here. Um, and some of these people, you might be like, I'm not sure who these people are. That's okay. You can still pray for all these people that are listed there. Pray for their relationship with the Lord. Pray for their witness and their safety. I've included other pastors and churches in the area to keep in prayer. Other ministries in our church. Other missions that we support to keep in prayer. Again, that we may continue to be a witness for God in this community. We would continue to be a welcoming, welcome, welcoming, loving community that seeks to bring all people into a growing relationship with Christ. So I want you to take one of these home. Commit yourself to pray each day over the next 50 days. Um, you may decide to do it in the morning or the evening. I encourage people typically to do it in the morning. It doesn't have to be long. It could be five minutes. Maybe it could be longer than that. It's up to you. But again, I wonder how God might bless you and might bless us as a church if we did this. So now through Easter, uh, to take time each day to pray, to read a psalm, and to pray. Uh, I'll be preaching on some different prayers. Uh, today we're looking at Hannah's prayer. We'll look at Solomon. We'll look at David. We'll look at Nehemiah's, uh, Jesus' prayer. Uh, different prayer each week. So I want to ask you to bow with me in prayer. Let's pray together. Lord, as we begin this season of the church, we are grateful that we can communicate with you. And we ask for your spirit to help us as we take time each day to pray, to read a psalm and to pray. Pray for ourselves, to pray for others. We ask you to be with us in these services on Sunday, God, as we share and read these prayers from your word. We might learn and gain insight as we live our lives today. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. We pray this in the name of Christ, who is our strength and our redeemer. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 So if you have your Bibles today, I want to ask you to open up to 1 Samuel chapter 1. In Samuel, we find a woman whose prayer was used by God to bring into being the first and in some ways the greatest of the prophets of Israel. A man who had become the spiritual guide and mentor to the first two kings of Israel. Her name is Hannah, the mother of Samuel. 
Now the story's told in kind of four simple movements here. We see Hannah's pain, Hannah's prayer, Hannah's peace, and Hannah's praise. I want to look first at the problem Hannah faced and the pain that it gave to her. And we're going to be reading again 1 Samuel uh, verses 1 through 6. And I've asked Sheena uh, if she's going to read there. And she's got a microphone. Is it working, Sheena? Hopefully. There you go. So just follow along as she reads verses 1 through 6. There was a man named Elkanah who lived in Ramah in the hill country of Ephraim. He was the son of Jerem and grandson of Eloah from the family of Tuhu in the clan of Zoph. Elkanah had two wives, Hannah and Penna. Penna had children, while Hannah did not. Each year, Elkanah and his family would travel to Shiloh to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at the tabernacle. The priests of the Lord at the time were the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas. On the day Elkanah presented his sacrifice, he would give portions of the sacrifice to Penna in each of her children, but he gave Hannah a special portion because he loved her very much, even though the Lord had given her no children. But Penna made fun of Hannah because the Lord had closed her womb. So there was Hannah's problem. She was a barren woman who longed to have a child, married to a man named Elkanah, who happened to have another wife named Penina. Penina had children, Hannah had no children. But she had a deep desire to have a child. And, and as in any married woman, she expected and hoped soon to feel the first signs of pregnancy. But when months and years, and yet her womb was unfruitful, she longed to have a son. What made it worse was, if you heard at the end there, Elkanah's other wife, Penina, seemed to have a baby every time she turned around. Just as regularly as the seasons, a new child would come, and that she'd hear the laughter of the children and the joy of them in the house, but Hannah had no children. That ache in her heart deepened as time went by. The final wrench of agony, of course, was that Penina would not keep quiet about her fertility. She found a thousand ways to remind Hannah of her barrenness. She taunted her and mocked her because Every, and every word sank deeply into Hannah's heart. She grieved over the fact that she didn't have any children. Now, of course, we could say one of the problems may have been the fact that there were two women in the house. Uh, that certainly would bring conflict. See, there's always proof to be true when God's intention, his original intention is ignored. Relationship problems ensue. And, and though in the Bible, particularly in the Old Testament, it records polygamy among some of the patriarchs, it never is endorsed. And here's an instance of the price that's been paid because people follow the customs of the world around them. This man, Elkanah, had two wives instead of one. And then here we find in verses 7 and 8, as we begin to open up into Hannah's prayer. Sheena, read verses 7 and 8, please. Year after year, it was the same. Hannah would taught Hannah as they went to the tabernacle. Hannah would finally be reduced to tears and would not even eat. What's the matter, Hannah? Elkanah would ask. Why are you eating? Why be so sad just because you have no children? You have me. Isn't that better than having 10 sons? She was so distressed she couldn't eat. You ever been there? So distressed, so upset, couldn't eat. She'd been made fun of. And even Elkanah couldn't completely understand her husband, the anguish that she's going through. She's so depressed, not able to eat. And again, he asks, aren't I enough? Do you still need to have... You know, Elkanah as much as 10 children, 10 sons. He didn't understand that Hannah felt like a failure because she couldn't give him even one child. I think she loved her husband, but she wanted to give him a son. But none of his assurances of devotion and love benefited or helped the deep sorrow that she was going through. Now, in the culture of that day, it was considered a blessing to have children. And the more children you had, the more blessed you were. It was thought. And her inability to conceive and have a child, she felt was like a curse, a curse upon her, that she couldn't have a child. And, and a gay man's prosperity wouldn't continue on if the name wasn't able to continue on. And this one year, when they went up to bring the tithe to the temple, it seemed like it came to a, to, to, to a pinnacle. She was really upset. Penina must have been really pushing her buttons. 
It was a custom in those days to sell their cattle or sheep, bring the money to the tabernacle. They would then purchase an animal to sacrifice and give the tithe to the priest. And then with that sacrifice, they would have a meal together as a family. Kind of like the Lord's Supper. It was customary to give every person a portion. Well, Penina with her children, each one of those children all got a portion of food. And, and Hannah would only get one portion. That's where Elkanah came and gave her a double portion, trying to ease her pain. But her rival kept provoking her more and more. Read verses 9 through 16, please, Jane. Once they were at Shiloh, Hannah went over to the tabernacle after supper to pray to the Lord. Eli the priest was sitting at his customary place beside the entrance. Hannah was in deep anguish, crying bitterly as she prayed to the Lord. And she made this vow, O Lord Almighty, if you will look down upon my sorrow and answer my prayer and give me a son, then I will give him back to you. He will be yours for his entire lifetime. And as a sign that he has been dedicated to the Lord, his hair will never be cut. As she was praying to the Lord, Eli watched her. Seeing her lips moving, but hearing no sound, he thought that she had been drinking. Must you come here drunk? He demanded. Throw away your wine. Oh no, sir, she replied. I'm not drunk, but I am very sad. And I was pouring out my heart to the Lord. Please don't think I am a wicked woman, for I have been praying out great anguish and sorrow. Now, it seemed like when you first hear that, that maybe she was bartering or bartering with God. Uh, she's offering to give the boy back to the Lord if she was blessed with a child. And, and that may be a possible reading we could get from that. But, but I, I tend to think that this prayer of hers was not the first time she prayed it. But she'd been praying this prayer. Maybe she worked through it. And she dreamed of, of having a son, a little boy that she could cuddle and teach how to walk and read stories to and watch him grow into manhood, become strong and a young man in pride of her life. She wanted him for herself, and, and maybe she often prayed that, but her prayer hadn't been answered. Now, all of a sudden, her prayer was different. Maybe having worked through this barrenness and having thought deeply about her problem, she realizes for the first time something she hadn't known before. She realizes that children are not just for their parents, but for the Lord. In her anguish and in her grief, Hannah prayed to the Lord, and she began by making this vow, that if the Lord blessed her with a child, the Lord graciously looked upon her, she would ask for a blessing on her son, and she said that no razor would come on his head, which really was the vow of a Nazareth. If you want to go back and look, it's in Numbers chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. We're not going to read that now. But that was a dedication of a Nazarite vow. And Hannah's silent prayer to her God was so intense and filled with, with such emotion, again, as we read, that Eli, the priest, the high priest, who was seated nearby, noted the movement of her lips, but nothing coming out of her mouth, and assumed that she was drunk. And not to be seen like a wicked man when he, when he confronted her about that. She said, no, I, my heart is broken. I'd like to have a child. I want a child. And, and after that explanation, Eli assures her that God would answer her prayer. This assurance from Eli was an encouragement to Hannah's heart. Read verses 17 and 18. In that case, Eli said, cheer up. May the God of Israel grant the request you have asked of him. Oh, thank you, sir, she exclaimed. Then she went back and began to eat again, and she was no longer sad. It's amazing what an encouraging word can do. She went back and she ate again. She had peace that God was going to take care of things. Peace that we often describe as that passes understanding. Now, when you're in the midst of a problem, you don't know how much time's gone by. We know the whole story, and we know that within a year later, she did have a child, named him Samuel, again meaning God hears, asked of God, that God had granted her request, but there was peace in her heart right from the very moment that the priest said that, Eli said that to her. The Apostle Paul tells us this, have no anxiety about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. 
And what we like to read after that, and God will answer your prayers. But that's not what it says. It says, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's what Hannah experienced. When we pray believing, God brings peace. We may not know what the answer is actually going to be, but there can be peace. She had pain. She prayed. She found peace. And then one more thing I want us to see. She praised the Lord. I'm not going to read the rest of chapter 1, but the account tells us that when the time had come, she gave birth to a boy, named him Samuel. Several years, she didn't go back up to the temple and worship. But until the boy was weaned, which was a Hebrew custom, when he was probably five or six years old, she came back to the temple with her husband. And then read the last verse there, verse 28 of chapter 1, Shina. Now I am giving him to the Lord, and he will belong to the Lord his whole life. And they worship the Lord there. And what happened at that point, at five or six years old, she left Samuel at the temple with the priest. Didn't come back home again. She gave him, literally gave him over to the Lord to be in service to the Lord. And then in chapter 2, we begin and we read these words. She going to read chapter 2, verses 1 to 7, please. Then Hannah prayed, My heart rejoices in the Lord. Oh, how the Lord has blessed me. Now I have an answer for my enemies as I delight in your deliverance. No one is holy like the Lord. There is no one beside you. There is no rock like our God. Stop acting so proud and haughty. Stop speak with such arrogance. The Lord is a God who knows your deeds, and he will judge you for what you have done. Those who are mighty are mighty no more, and those who were weak are now strong. Those who were well fed are now starving, and those who were starving are now full. The barren woman now has seven children, but the woman with many children will have no more. The Lord brings both death and life. He brings them down to the grave, but raises the others up. The Lord makes one poor and another rich. He brings one down and lifts another up. She's recognizing that God had a hand in everything. And God has a hand in everything. Not only the deliverances, but in all the problems as well. And her praise continues, verses 8 through 11. He lifts the poor from the dust, yes, from a pile of ashes. He treats them like princes, places them in the seats of honor. For all the earth is the Lord's, and he has set the world in order. He will protect his godly ones, but the wicked will perish in darkness. No one will succeed by strength alone. Those who fight against the Lord will be broken. He thunders against them from heaven. The Lord judges throughout the earth. He gives mighty strength to his king. He increases the might of his anointed one. Then Elkanai and Hannah returned home to Ramah without Samuel, and the boy became the Lord's helper, for he assisted Eli the priest. It's amazing when we read that prayer and hear that prayer. Um, for some reason in our mindset today, we think we're smarter than people were in the past. We think we're more educated. Did that prayer sound like an uneducated woman prayed that prayer? Not at all. Now, many centuries later, the angel Gabriel was sent to Mary of Nazareth to tell that she was going to have a son, though she'd never known a man. And as she felt those stirrings within her, she went to visit her, her cousin Elizabeth, who also was going to have a child. We know it would be John the Baptist. And she broke into song on that occasion. It's interesting. These prayers are songs and how similar they all, you are, they are. That, that Mary borrowed from Hannah's theme and even certain phrases directly from Hannah. Now it's very fitting that this would happen because Samuel was God's answer to the needs of the nation at the moment of a low ebbing of faith. The period of judges had ended. The nation was on the verge of destruction. And Jesus also came. The nation kind of had fallen. There had been barrenness. There had been despair. 400 years of silence. No prophet had arisen in Israel. And people were listening to all these various philosophies 
and, and mocking taunts about where God is. And at the darkest hour, the angel Gabriel came to Mary to tell her that in the fullness of time, God would send forth a son born of a woman made under the law to redeem us who were under the law. And when the occasion came, as we remember so well as Christians, the angels on the hillside there in Bethlehem sang, unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior which is Christ the Lord. And Mary sang that great song of praise. We call it the Magnificat. My soul does magnify the Lord because God had shown her mercy in a time of despair. And we get had a song. A song of praise. My heart exalts in the Lord. My strength is exalted in the Lord. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy like the Lord. There is none besides thee. There is no rock like our God. In her time of sorrow, God showed her mercy. Her pain, her prayer, her peace, and her praise. Friends, what's your pain today? What is it that you're anguishing over? Is it something you've done you wish you hadn't done? Is it a struggle that you're going through right now? A situation where you see it seems hopeless? My encouragement to you is to take it to the Lord, to follow Hannah's example and to pray to the Lord. The promise of God's word is that God will bring peace to your life and heart. We think about peace, particularly in days like these. We've said it many times that peace is not the absence of war, but peace, true peace, is when we are right with God. When we trust God, true peace comes from the Lord and is in the Lord. So I would encourage you to take whatever pain you have right now, to recognize that God loves you, that God cares about you, that God is the only one who can help you. <coughs> And don't forget to thank him for his blessings in your life. So I want to ask you just to bow your heads if you would. It's amazing what happens when we pray and we thank the Lord. The first thing it reminds us that there's things we can't do ourselves. We need God's power. We need God's source of life. And, and something else happens when we pray and we thank God. Others are encouraged. That in the midst of our doubts, in the midst of our struggles, in the midst of our pain, God is in control. It helps other people know that our faith in the Lord can be strong and they too can be strong and help us go through whatever we need to go through. So take a moment now. What is the pain that you have? Let the Lord know. Let him have it. Let him take your pain. Lord, as we start these 50 days of prayer, we want to be right with you. I pray, God, today, if anybody here doesn't know you as their Savior, as their Lord, even now, God, your spirit might move in their hearts. And we even know you, God. We know that you hear us. We know that you're listening. We know that you care, but so often, God, we don't come to you first. We come to you last. We come to you when we've tried everything we can do. Help us, God, to come to you first. Forgive us. Help us. We trust you, God. We love you. Take, take the pain, God, that is represented in this room right now. Whether it's a pain of something that was said or done, whether it's the pain in a person's heart, whether it's distress, whatever it is, Lord, we give it to you. Help us. For God, we recognize that in you and you alone is true peace. So Lord, help us in these days to seek your peace, to find your peace, and to live in that peace. Change us, break us, mold us, shape us, God, into what you want us to be for your sake. We ask this in the name of Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. 
Sheena, thank you for reading today. As we close today, I'd like to ask us to stand together and let's sing this beautiful hymn together, Near to the Heart of God. Let's sing. <laughs> We ask this in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 God bless you as you go. Have a wonderful week.